Adobe Lightroom is just about the most popular photo organizing and editing tool there is. But is it just overkill? If you have Adobe Lightroom, then the chances are you have an Adobe Photography Plan, which means you also have access to Adobe Bridge and Adobe Camera Raw. And these may actually be simpler in the long run. Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and this is a video for amateur photographer on Adobe Bridge, Adobe Camera Raw, and how you can use them together. Lightroom has many strengths, but a lot of photographers don't really need its sophisticated search and organizing tools, and in fact may find it easier just to browse their images folder by folder. You don't need Lightroom for this because you can do it in Adobe Bridge, which is included in the photography plan. Even better, Adobe Bridge updates folder contents live. There's no separate import process, so that if you add more photos to a folder, they will appear in Adobe Bridge automatically. Bridge is actually a very powerful and flexible tool. It has a range of different workspaces for a start, the Essentials workspace simply shows all the images in a folder as thumbnails. And you have panels for navigating your folders, filtering images by format, keywords, camera, lens, ISO setting, and a whole lot more. You can also check the EXIF or shooting information for each photo and its IPTC metadata, which can include keywords, for example. There's also a film strip view, which shows images in a strip along the bottom with a full-size preview in the main window to see a much larger view of any image. There are other workspaces for different photography workflows, but it's the Essentials and Filmstrip workspaces that I personally find most useful. What about image organization though? Sometimes a simple folder system might not be enough. In looking around Adobe Bridge, you may have noticed a collections panel. Here you can create the Adobe Bridge version of collections in Lightroom. You can think of these as virtual collections of images which are actually stored in different folders. This system does have its limits. You can't organize collections within collections. You simply have to work with a long linear list. So you might want to ration how many collections you create. And while Adobe Bridge does offer smart collections, which can search for matching images within a single folder, or a whole nested structure of folders, it can quickly get bogged down in an indexing task which it never quite seems to finish if you try to search a large photo library. The organizing approach I use most often is to browse folders directly, use collections for short-term projects such as features or videos for amateur photographer, and use the filter panel to narrow down these images to those I'm most interested in, such as those with five star ratings, or a particular orientation or aspect ratio. One other advantage of Adobe Bridge for organizing images is that you can add keywords directly. These are either embedded in the image file if it's a JPEG or a TIFF image, or if it's a RAW file, they're stored alongside as .xmp metadata files, or so-called sidecar files. So the organizing, browsing and filtering tools in Adobe Bridge can actually be very effective. But what about editing photos? It doesn't have any editing tools at all, does it? Adobe Bridge might not have any editing tools of its own, but it does have Adobe Camera Raw right on hand. If you right click on any photo, you can choose Open in Camera Raw from the shortcut menu. It doesn't actually have to be a RAW file, as Adobe Camera Raw can open JPEG and TIFF images too, and edit them in just the same way. Now, although the Adobe Camera Raw interface might look somewhat different to Lightroom Classics Develop Mode, it actually has all the same tools, right down to profiles and presets, AI subject selection and masking, and all the regular enhancement tools you get in Lightroom. And just like Lightroom, it's completely non-destructive. Adobe Camera Raw will not alter your original photos in any way. Instead, it saves all the changes you make in separate .xmp sidecar files alongside the photo. When you browse that folder, Adobe Bridge will automatically locate and apply your edits based on these .xmp files. Just be aware that if you move photos to another folder and leave their .xmp files behind, 
your edits will be lost. The safest way to move photos is in Adobe Bridge itself because it will automatically move these sidecar files too. There's one more aspect in which Adobe Bridge makes a great tool for editing your photos and not just organizing them. That's because you're not limited to Adobe Camera Raw for editing. You can drag any image to any other photo editing application, do your editing and as long as you save the edited version back to the same folder, Adobe Bridge will see it straight away. One thing to be aware of though is that if you have made any changes in Adobe Camera Raw, these will be ignored by any third party programs. Is there any way around this? Not exactly, because Adobe's non-destructive adjustments are proprietary and invisible to other programs. There is a handy workaround to make your Adobe Camera Raw adjustments permanent though. With your edited image open in Adobe Camera Raw, use the Convert and Save button in the top right corner of the window to save a new image as a JPEG or a TIFF file to the same folder. That way you get the best of both worlds. You get to re-edit your original RAW file as much as you like, but you also have a processed version you can view and edit outside of Bridge. So that's just a quick tour of Adobe Bridge, how it works with Adobe Camera Raw and how between them, they can make a fascinating and simpler alternative to Adobe Lightroom. There's lots more to look at and explore in Adobe Bridge, but I'll stop there. So thanks for watching, see you next time.